Kamado Joe slow roller in a big green egg? What the? You guys asked for it, so I'm up at four o'clock in the morning to cook these two briskets, one on the Kamado Joe with the slow roller and one on my big green egg, yeah, with a slow roller. Let's go get these set up. If you're new to the channel, this is Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's my Kamado Joe Big Joe Series 2. And there's a fun story about how he got here in my backyard. You see, last year I challenged James from Smoking Dad Barbecue to a duel. I said, you know, the Kamado Joe is all hype and I'll prove it. And if my brisket's not better, I'll switch to Kamado Joe. And if mine is better, you gotta switch back to Big Green Egg. And uh, well, I mean, I guess you can look and see how that turned out for me, even though I stacked the deck and had my daughter be the one deciding. But here we are. So I think I've figured out the secret. Why Kamado Joe makes a better brisket than Big Green Egg. I think it's this device right here called the slow roller. So this was introduced with the Kamado Joe Series 3, but they sell them separately, which is how I was able to get this one to put into my Series 2 so that uh, I could get the flavor of the Series 3 with all the extra smoke that the slow roller brings. So once the slow roller is fully assembled, instead of using the ceramic heat deflectors, this metal becomes the heat deflector. And now the Kamado Joe can produce more smoke than the Big Green Egg, right? Well, let's see if we can get one of these into the Big Green Egg. So this, if you've been here before, you might recognize is Darth Vader. Darth was, of course, defeated by Obi-Wan Kenobi, but in what appears to be some strange sequel that we're recreating here. So if this works, then Darth comes back to the set and is one of the grills that I get to keep cooking on. Now, if life were easy, I would just be able to put the slow roller in in the same way that I did on Obi-Wan, and I'd be able to set this here and then I'd be able to set the lid on here, and I'd be able to set the frame in like this, put the heat deflector in, drop the grate back on and close, but that's not gonna work. And yes, by the way, I did buy a whole new slow roller with cash out of my pocket so that I could do this. If you watched my review of the Connected Joe, you know that I am not in any way beholden to Kamado Joe or Big Green Egg. And I just speak my mind, but that means that I gotta write checks sometimes. So I figured out that the way to do this is actually to remove this, I think it's called the upper fire ring. This is not sanctioned by Big Green Egg or Kamado Joe or anybody else. Matter of fact, I haven't done this before and cooked on it, but I'm willing to try for you. But I think we're gonna be okay. With this setup now, the slow roller is going to sit way down here. So now when I assemble this, the grate actually sits right at the same level it did before and no problem closing. So will it work? Will it circulate smoke the same way? Will it produce the same flavor of brisket? Only one way to find out, let's get these things lit. I've been waiting for you, Obi-Wan. We meet again at last. Now I am the master. Psst. Only a master of evil, Darth. So let's put our slow rollers back together so these can become heat soaked just like the dome. We're gonna wait to put the slow roller heat deflector in until after Darth is up to temperature and the dome is heat soaked. So for right now, wide open on the top, wide open on the bottom. We're gonna wait to put the heat deflector tops on the slow rollers until both Darth and Obi-Wan are heat soaked and we can feel the heat in the ceramic and then we'll finish putting them together. In the meantime, Let's go get those briskets started. So as you can see, I didn't just start these briskets here. I actually trimmed these last night. Trimmed four briskets because we're doing two brisket battles. So we'll give you a hint as to the other one later. But I did on here what's called a super trim, or at least that's what I call it. It's a technique I learned from Matt Pittman down in Waxahachie, Texas. If you uh, follow Meat Church Barbecue, you know Matt. 
But the idea is that I have trimmed all of the fat from the point and just left a fat cap on the flat. And uh, this is gonna help the way that it cooks. So I'm gonna start with salt and all we're gonna do is really simple seasoning here. The goal isn't to make the best brisket I've ever made. The goal is to make two briskets to compare cooking methods. So I'm going traditional. I'm going Morton's kosher salt and I'm going cracked black pepper. A rule of thumb here is about one teaspoon of salt per pound after trimming. This is about nine pounds, nine and a half pounds of brisket on each of them. So we're gonna give the salt just a couple of minutes to work and it's gonna start pulling out moisture from the beef into a slurry that we can then use as kind of a natural binder for the pepper we're gonna put on. All right, so for our cracked black pepper, we're actually gonna use the pepper cannon. I wouldn't try to do this with any other pepper grinder just because of the volume that's needed, but I'm gonna set it to the coarsest setting here and then just watch how easy it is for me to get a volume of cracked pepper out. And this is so much better than just using the pre-ground pepper. You get all the oils from fresh cracking here. It really does make a difference in the taste. Imagine how long this would take with a regular pepper grinder. All right, I'm gonna grind a little extra into the cap here so that I can do the sides. All right, so our temperatures are stable at 225 degrees on both. So let's go ahead and get these briskets loaded. To be fair, I'm not gonna decide which ones goes which. So let's load the Kamado Joe first. Nick, which one of these should go on the Kamado Joe? One or two? One, okay. All right, now you can see I've got it set up with a water pan. So I'm not really worried about heat coming from underneath. So I'm gonna go fat side up. Even though common wisdom is fat side down on Kamado style cookers, I have faith, so we're cooking fat side up. All right, let's get this one over to Darth. Luke, I am your father. Do the same thing here, fat side up. So for Darth, after years of experience, I know the temperature moves up and down, so I'm using the thermal work signals and Billow's combination, that's the fan assembly that will make sure that we stay right at 225. Later we'll bump up the temp, but this is gonna maintain stability. The Kamado Joe I already know is gonna be temperature stable, so I'm using the Quad X Pro from Chef's Temp, and that's just gonna monitor, and I'll be able to take this remote with me and watch the temperature here remotely. I'll use the app for the thermal work. So we're just gonna let smoke get on these for the next three hours. We're not gonna look not gonna peak as much as we want to, and I might go and take a little bit of a nap. See you in three hours, or at least it might be three hours for you. For me, it's gonna be like that. Okay, we're three and a half hours in. Temperatures look like they're stable on both grills. Let's take a peek and see whether they need spritzing and get a feel for how our cook's going. All right, so we've got some nice red color here. This is darkening well. It doesn't look dry anywhere so i guess our water pan is helping with moisture i don't think this needs to be touched for a while so let's uh maybe give it another hour or so and check again let's go see what's going on over on darth all right still looking good looks like our water pan has dried out i might add a little bit more water to that looks like we got like a not as red a color, but more of a brown color, but still got quite a bit of color. You know, I think it is dried out a little bit. Interesting that the big green egg is using up a little bit more of the water. All right, got some hot water here. Still not fire temp. I wonder if maybe this is because the slow roller is so much closer to the fire with this big green egg set up, maybe that's why it dissolved. I wonder if that means that the brisket is cooking faster. Maybe it's getting more heat. I don't know, I guess we'll find out. All right, we are four and a half hours in. We are looking good over here. So we've lost all the water in the water pan, which is fine at this stage of the cook. We're still pretty moist. We're probably in the stall or close to it because we're should be pushing out some water now. I think I'm gonna give it a little bit of a spritz here. Just keep it moist. All right, let's go check out the uh, brisket on dark. 
All right, we're looking about the same. No more water, but I'm not gonna fix that. I don't feel like there's much of a bark on either of these. This one, maybe a little dry back here. All right, so I think we're gonna give it another hour and a half, get up to that six hour mark. All right, we'll see you then. All right, let's take a look. We're at six hours. Okay, now this is starting to look more like a brisket. It's still not that really dark bark that I'm used to. I don't think I'm ready to put this in a boat or wrap, but there's something else I wanna do. I'm gonna push this back because I'm doing another video today where these people said that they think their machine can make a better steak than I can. So I'm gonna put it to the test. So I'm gonna just use this space right here on the grill. So we're gonna let this uh, steak cook. I'll be back to get it off and maybe when it's time to come off and rest and sear, it'll be time to put that in a boat. But for now, we'll just let it be. All right, I'm seeing the same thing here. It's not as dark as I would really like. I'm gonna scoot this back again, make room for the steak I'm putting on here. There's no way that machine is gonna beat me. I guess you guys will find out in a couple weeks when that video comes out. And when this is ready, hopefully it'll be time also to, uh, to boat. All right, now we've got a nice looking bark. All right, I think it's time to boat. So we're gonna do a foil boat here, which is just simply like putting a sweater on here. So I'm gonna fold up the sides and I'm gonna get it as snug as I can. Now what we're doing is leaving the top exposed so we can get more smoke on the top, but still protect the bottom. And this kind of sweater thing is gonna actually speed up our cooking. And I'm gonna put this back on and I'm gonna take that temperature probe we had in the steak, and I'm gonna put it in the thickest part of the flat, just so we can keep track of the cook. Not that we're cooking to temperature. So based on how tough this is, we got a ways to go, even though we're reading close to 195. This is gonna take at least another couple hours. Yeah, this one's ready too. It's looking sharp. All right, here we go. That's a nice sweater you got on there, young man. All right, it's gonna come over here and temperature probe into the flat again. We're a long ways from done. This one's reading 187, so pretty close to the other one, but these briskets are gonna go a long way. I can tell from how tough they are. So we'll come back and check them when we get over 200. All right. Surely we're ready now, right? All right, it's a good sign. Yeah. All right, this one's ready. Let me pull this one to rest. And over here. Yep, it is ready. So we gotta wait for these to rest, but look at these and the differences. Look at the color. This is a dark brown, a little bit of red, but very typical brisket color. And then over here on the Kamado Joe brisket, it's red, but it was the same charcoal. Like literally I used no flavor wood. I used just Jealous Devil charcoal. Really the only difference is Kamado Joe, big green egg, and this one, the slow roller was closer to the fire. So I don't know what that means. And I don't know what this is gonna mean in terms of taste. It doesn't look like one got more smoke than the other, but now we need the hardest part of making a brisket. It's not trimming, it's not cooking. It's waiting for the rest when you can smell how good it's gonna be, but you can't taste it yet. But I'll see you in a little bit. Hey guys, I don't know how to explain this. The Kamado Joe brisket is dry. Now it does have a nice smoke ring. Now the big green egg, which was closer to the fire that I thought was a greater chance of being overcooked is actually moist and juicy. Does not have as much of a smoke ring. All right, let's try taste. 
I'm not gonna dip this in the fat from the egg because that would be cheating. It's flavorful, but it's dry. I'm sending this brisket back. All right, let's try the point maybe. Point looks a little juicier. Nice smoke ring. It's delicious, but it's not that juicy, moist point. You can see here the difference. Pulls apart. There's no difference in taste, guys. But this is juicier and more tender. Look, I don't know what I did wrong. I'm gonna have to keep experimenting, but I think the slow roller and the big green egg produced maybe a better brisket. Look, I don't know whether it's double indirect that has made the difference with this before, or maybe I shouldn't have cooked to 250, I should have cooked to 225, but it worked fine over here. This is better than the briskets I was making on the big green egg before I had the slow roller. I mean, there's no question that this upped the game. So I guess to answer the question, yes, a slow roller can save my big green egg. I hope you enjoy the experiment and I hope you enjoy this video. You should watch this one next and I'll see you next time on Eat More Vegans.